Hey guys, Squatch Loading here. Today we are going to go into part five of our 223 series on our Rock Chucker Supreme. And this is going to be a good video because what we're going to do is we're going to set up our powder measure to the desired charge weight of powder that we want. I'm not going to get into the load data, but it's taken right out of the uh, Hornady load manual so you can figure out pretty quick. But uh, we're going to get the charge weight that I want uh, set up on this Uniflow powder measure. And we're going to get the uh, bullets seated uh, in these cartridges. And you know, the last step is the crimp. Maybe we'll get to it all today. Uh, so stick around and uh, let's get to it. All right, so continuing with our working, our reloading in bulk, I should say our bulk processing here on our 223, we are gonna take from the ready to load bin. And this is what we've been working on through this whole series is getting finished or somewhat finished cartridges in this bin because these are all ready to load. We've trimmed them, we've sized them, we've chamfered to burr the ID and OD, we've conditioned the primer pockets. And in the last video, we've put primers in these. So in this bin is basically everything ready to load. And by load, I'm talking putting the powder in and the bullet, and they're pretty much done aside from applying the crimp. So this is the bin that we're gonna work out of, and this is the bin that we've been working to fill. So here we go. So in this video, we are gonna utilize the uh, RCBS Uniflow powder measure. And this is pretty representative of what you might find in a master reloading kit, you know, from whether it's from Lee, Hornady, whoever. Uh, this particular powder measure, I think will come with some of the uh, uh, more advanced reloading kits from RCBS, like the uh, master kit and so on, or the uh, Supreme Master Kit. Uh, but anyways, quick tip, uh, in my powder measure in the hopper, uh, I keep a used dryer sheet in here, and what it does is it dissipates any static electricity, so I don't have any powder uh, stuck to the side of the uh, uh, container there. And, you know, another thing that I do, since um, I don't remember what powder I had in this last, uh, and, you know, inadvertently there's going to be some powder stuck inside the drum somewhere, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a, just do a couple throws here to make sure that there's no powder coming out. And we had a couple grains fly out, so uh, that's pretty much... Uh, good to go. Now the other thing that we need to do first here is determine uh, which nozzle that we're going to have on the bottom of the powder measure. This one comes with uh, two. One of them, you know, obviously has a, a larger uh, opening and one has a smaller opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cartridge here that we're going to be loading and I want to, ideally, if, if your kit comes with, you know, is more precise and has uh, additional uh, dispenser or whatever these things are called. Uh, you wanna go with the biggest that you possibly can without the cartridge uh, sliding inside. And if you look here, you know, that 223 cartridge goes in uh, inside that ID. And in this one here, it doesn't go all the way in. So that's the one I'm gonna use. Uh, that way I get a good, good seal on the cartridge and uh, I don't get any powder spillage. So just something to keep in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and set that other one aside and screw this appropriate discharge tube or adapter or whatever you want to call it uh, on the bottom of our powder measure here. So we are we are ready to go. Um, in this video we're going to use um, a certain powder. You know I don't like giving out recipes or anything like that so uh, we're going to use a, a good powder, fine ball powder that I like here. And uh, what I'm going to do first is go ahead and fill up the powder hopper and it's always a good idea to go over halfway um, that way you get a, a pretty good, I'm going to go a little further, uh, you get a good uh, continuous down pressure on the powder and it stays more consistent that way. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and give this some love, some love taps here. And what this is doing is it's unifying the powder and it's going to get that powder settled quickly. And um, after we throw a couple charges, we're going to be right into the butter zone as far as uh, consistent drops every time. But you know, go on ahead and, and unifying that powder measure ahead of time is going to save you, you know, quite a few throws before you get uh, some consistency. So, okay, before we get uh, too far ahead of ourselves on setting up our powder measure, we need to know what our charge weight is going to be. And I'm going to resort back to uh, a load that I've worked up uh, before uh, with this. Sorry, I got brass drying over here too. I've got a lot of things going on at once. But, um, uh, I've ran this this bullet and this uh, this load several times, and we're going to shoot for 
uh, 20, 26.9. So let's get that powder measure set up. I am not sure what the last throw that I did on this uh, powder measure was, and I believe it was a pistol round, so this is probably not, this doesn't have much uh, of a charge weight, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just run some drops here uh, to get everything kind of cleared out and get the uh, drum kind of settling in here. And then we're just going to check and see what my baseline charge weight is. And I'm going to weigh it over here on my electronic scale. This is a Dillon Determinator. And uh, right now we are set at 9.8 grains. So we have uh, quite a ways to go before we get to 26.9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this lock ring up here. And I am going to give it several turns here. Because I know uh, these are very fine thread on this powder measure. And once you start running your powder measures, you're going to kind of get a feel or an understanding of how much uh, that you move that internal drum with this with this uh, adjustment screw, how many uh, grains it's going to uh, change versus the powder type. Um, it's a learning process. Uh, a lot of these have um, micrometer increments on it. And if you're using the same powder all the time, you can kind of get a system worked up where you know if you move it, uh, you know, five graduations on the micrometer, what that's going to yield you on the powder. But uh, like I said, that's something that is different uh, with every type of powder. But it does, you know, having those graduations allows you to, you know, develop a baseline if you're using the same powder all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop, I'm going to do five drops. And that's mainly to get everything cleared out and making sure I'm getting you know, some consistency in the uh, powder cavity there. So let's go ahead and check uh, where we're at right now. And right now we are sitting at 24.5. So we've got some adjustments to do. And I will go ahead and get this dialed in off camera here and I'll bring you back. But another thing I want to note is uh, this powder measure is very accurate and it's very consistent and it is cons as consistent as you are and what I'm getting at is is developing a good uh, rhythm or developing a good cadence you know an up and down throw on your powder measure the better you are the better this uh, powder measure is going to perform so when I get where I'm loading and I'm getting this set up I get a cadence that I can maintain and uh, it just works uh, better that way. So I'm going to get this dialed in. Uh, again, I'm going to be adjusting this. I need more of a charge, so I'm going to adjust this counterclockwise uh, to get more uh, room in that cavity for some additional powder. So I'll bring you back here in a second. Okay, I think I have her dialed in here. We're going to try for 26.9. Let's try it again here. Got my throw off the powder measure. 26.9. All right, that's exactly where we want to be. I'm going to double check it here. 26.9, so perfect. All right, so we have our charge weight set uh, where I'm wanting to run it at 26.9. And, you know, I've shown you guys several ways um, and methods, to, you know, how to use a load block, uh, setting charges. And I think for this video, what I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to do these one at a time and I'm going to fill this load block. Again, uh, there is 50 in here and if you've seen the reloader dude uh, questioning my math, um, you need to give him uh, some grief over it because uh, I think I've seen his video that he did about 4 in the morning on my uh, <laughs> before work and I actually had to come downstairs and count how many holes were in this load block because he kind of messed with my brain a little bit. But uh, anyways, go check out the reloader dude. But we're going to charge these one at a time, do an inspection, and fill this load block. So uh, let's get going on making that happen. So I'm taking cartridges from our ready to load bin. And uh, what you want to do is get this uh, up into this uh, dispenser here. 
you know, with some firm pressure and repeat that same cadence again that you were, that you did when you set up the uh, powder measure. So good, solid up and down. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek at my powder level in here. And hopefully you guys can see that, maybe you can't. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek and I'm gonna start working uh, on filling up this load block. So again, you know, cadence is everything, consistency. I'm visually looking inside uh, the cartridge. And when I'm pulling these out, uh, just for your reference, I'm taking a peek at these primer pockets. And as I'm coming to make sure there's a primer in there, obviously. And then I'm also just quickly visualizing uh, for any cracks or deformation in the cartridge. You know, we've looked at these several times already, but um, in my opinion, you cannot over inspect uh, when you're reloading. So there we go. We're going to work on getting this load block filled up and then I will bring you back. Okay, so now that we have our charge weight set, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, seating die set up, my bullet seating die. So as I finish off this load block, I can then, you know, go right into getting my, my bullet seated. And this is where we set up our case overall length. And in this video, I'm going to use, uh, this is a uh, Frankfurt Arsenal universal seating die. And I will do a separate video on this die um, at a later date. Um, I just got it. And so far I've been playing with it and I really like it. But um, we're going to get this set up get our case overall length that we're looking for. Again, I think we're looking for uh, 1.235 to 1.240. So that's what I'm gonna shoot for, and we're gonna get this set up. Okay, so we're gonna start getting this case overall, case overall length set. And you know, I think earlier in our video, I said that I wanted my length to be 1.235 or 1.240. And I guess I'll find out who watched the entire uh, the video in its entirety because uh, that's a play on words that I, I misspoke there. It's actually 2.235 and 2.24 is the range I'm looking at. But uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, this seating die sets up just like any other seating die. The only exception is I'm actually, with this die, I'm gonna drop the bullet in the top. It guides it in for me. Um, if you're using a standard seating die, you're going to place the bullet on top. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it up into the die, and I'm going to start making a downward adjustment until I feel some resistance. Okay, so I felt some resistance, and I know that I'm very soft set, or I'm not, um, you know, short enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out a little bit, make a big adjustment, and go ahead and set it. And as you can see. Our bullet is soft set, so what I need to do now is get a measurement and see where we're at uh, as far as our overall length. Again, we're shooting for 2.235 uh, to 2.240, so let's get some calipers on these. All right, looking at my calipers, I'm at uh, 2.356, so I've got quite a ways to go. So I'm going to go ahead and make a pretty aggressive adjustment here, and can continue this process until I get uh, that bullet seated where I need it to be. So we're just going to keep making adjustments and rechecking. And again, guys, I'm using a dummy cartridge here. This is what I'm going to use uh, from here on out to set up this die when I'm running this particular load. And I'll write, um, you know, what the powder weight and what the case overall length is uh, on this dummy cartridge. Again, no primers and I will use that as kind of like a master sample going forward. So I'm gonna get this dialed in and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and start bringing these charged cartridges over and seating some bullets. All right, one final check here. All right, I am at 2.235 with a five. So we're gonna call that good. And uh, all right, we're ready to start loading. All right, so now we're gonna keep working through our load block. And again, guys, we're using these uh, uh, Hornady VMAX uh, 53 grain. And with your normal seating die, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our charged cartridge from our load block. Uh, your normal seating die, you're gonna basically uh, place that on top of the cartridge and you're gonna guide it up into the seating die like so. Um, with this, Frankfurt Arsenal 
seating die, which is kind of cool. You basically drop the bullet in like so, and it seats it. And I've used this uh, for a few weeks now, and the biggest thing to get used to is not guiding the bullet up into the die and not doing this every time, but actually just dropping the bullet in. And it works really good, and I'm really digging this die, and I'm going to do a video on this die specifically. But uh, seating our bullets is basically just this simple. We're going to get all of these seated, uh, continually working through our load block, and then we are going to get into the crimp die here next. All right, guys, so we have all of our bullets seated here. My load block is full. Uh, there's 50 there, reloader dude. But um, <laughs> anyways, uh, we're going to get into the next step, and that is crimping. And I've talked about this before. Some guys don't crimp. Some guys are advocates, you know, both ways. For me, I, I lean more towards, especially in uh, my auto-loading platforms like my AR or uh, Mini 14, I like to put a crimp on there, and I do what I call a medium-ish crimp <laughs> and there's no technical uh, dimension for that um, other than uh, just what's worked for me and in the feel and it really also depends on what uh, taper crimp die are using and in my case I'm going to use the uh, RCBS uh, taper crimp uh, which all it is is a uh, RCBS when they when they send you a two-piece die set and most of your two seat die sets are going to come this way your uh, seat and crimp die is a combo die. And um, to be frank, I hate seating and crimp dies because if your trim lengths, if your case prep, if your head stamps are not all identical, setting that die up is a bear. And, um, you know, 4223, I, I don't do that. Um, but what I do do is I use that taper crimp and all I'm doing is I'm taking the seating stem out and I'm just going to utilize the crimp feature uh, for these rounds. Um, so to achieve that with this die, again, your, your mileage may vary depending on which die that you have. But uh, I'm going to insert the cartridge into the shell holder, run the ram up, and I'm going to screw that die down until I feel it firmly engage the case mouth, okay? And once I feel that firm engagement, I'm gonna back the ram out a bit, and I'm gonna go between like an eighth uh, to a quarter of a turn. Um, again, this is something you're gonna get a feel for, but what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna uh, drive that case uh, mouth into the brass. I'm not looking to put any um, deformation onto this bullet. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm just looking to close up on the bullet if there's any gaps um, to make sure everything's sealed up. And, you know, you can definitely over crimp. And a lot of times, you know, when you, when you over crimp, you actually, uh, when you do that, you lose bullet tension because what happens is the case neck swells uh, around the bullet and the only point of contact that you really have uh, engaging the, the bullet is where you crimped it. Um, so all I'm looking to do is just close up uh, the, the cartridge onto the bullet so that I've got a good seal. Now, if you're running uh, bullets with a cantalure, um, and we can talk about that some other time, but all I'm looking to do is basically close that uh, case mouth up into the cantalure, and uh, that's, that's a whole other video. But uh, with these, we don't have to worry about that because these do not have a cantalure. So... Let's uh, get that crimp die set up. Crimp die time. So, kind of put into motion what I just described there earlier. Uh, I'm going to take one of our cartridges that we have everything done to, everything seated, uh, our primer, powder, the whole nine yards. We just need to crimp this bullet in. So what I'm going to do is, just so you guys can see, I'm going to place it in the shell holder, run the ram up all the way, and I'm going to start threading this die down. And what I'm looking for, again, is firm engagement on the case mouth. All right, 
right? Just like so. I'm not talking we need to wrench around on it, but I'm talking firm engagement here on the case mouth. And once that achieved, I'm going to basically go an eighth to a quarter of a turn. And I know how this tapered eye feels, so I'm just going to keep turning until I feel, and that feels pretty good to me. So I'm going to run this lock ring down just so I don't lose where I'm at. And I'm going to visually look. And that looks uh, pretty good. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have the case mouth uh, fully sealed up on the bullet. And uh, that's, that's all I'm going to do. That's, that's a firm um, medium-ish crimp, and that's what I like to do. So uh, now that we have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and place uh, this back up in here. And I'm going to get this lock ring dialed in here. Lock it into place. And it's always a good habit to um, lock this down with whatever operation you're doing. If you're seating, if you're sizing, or whatever. It's, it's always a good habit to get that locked down uh, with the operation you're doing. That way the die gets centered up uh, on center with the ram. And that you get uh, proper engagement to the threads. Because you can, uh, in theory, with the, the thread on these dies and the uh, uh, threaded portion in your press, uh, get some what I like to call cattywampus uh, die alignment. And, you know, that, that affects accuracy and it affects um, the task that you're doing. So uh, let's go ahead and get the rest of these crimped and then uh, we'll wrap things up. So another thing that I do when I when I set up my crimp, and, and again, I'm saying I like a medium-ish crimp, uh, but you can get a little too aggressive. And what happens when you get a little aggressive with your crimp is you'll actually um, pinch the cartridge or the case mouth down on the bullet, and it's going to go somewhere. And what it does, it usually buckles the top of the cartridge here at the base of the uh, where it starts to neck down. And what that'll do is it won't, will not allow it to slide into a case gauge. And if it's not sliding into a case gauge, maybe it's not going to slide into your chamber. Um, so you could have some extraction issues and things like that. Um, so what I like to do is just make sure after I get my crimp is to make sure it still falls right inside my case gauge. And I took one here uh, and over crimped it on purpose. I don't know if you can see this but we've got a slight buckle right there. And this was just a matter of another uh, half a turn on my uh, taper crimp and dropping it in the case gauge, you can see it catches. So these uh, do help, um, you know, picking up little defects like that. So it's a shame because this one was already loaded. So now I have to pull it apart and salvage the components, especially in this day and age. Where everything's short uh, but anyways I wanted to do that to show you you can get uh, a little overzealous when tightening this so again um, case gauge always does help uh, so again if you're if your crimps on point it's gonna slide right in the case gauge and sit flush you get a little over aggressive and you're gonna buckle the base of that shoulder um, just for you guys on the I don't like to crimp uh, fan club you know, this one hasn't been crimped yet, drops right in. So again, like I, like I said, you don't necessarily uh, have to crimp them. It's entirely up to you. But um, I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, but you can get a little crazy uh, over doing that crimp. Okay, guys, so we have one load block here finished. I've got... Uh, another 50 uh, bullets in that uh, pack of 100. I'm going to finish up off camera. But, you know, we worked through our load block. And, you know, one thing I wanted to kind of point out, and again, this is, this is my methodology, my madness in my brain. Um, but things that I've noticed uh, doing this is, you know, when, especially on crimping, there is a, there's a difference in 5.56 five, brass versus 223 two, brass. And I've noticed that um, when I mix those together and I set my crimp up, say for 223, two, three, it varies when I go to a 556 five, case and so on. Um, so it's it's hard to, you know, kind of keep that as uh, consistent. And, you know, for the intended purpose of this ammunition, um, 
You know, I'm not looking for uh, super ultra precision match ammo, but we still want to make the best uh, product or you know cartridge that we possibly can. And I found that separating those out, um, I get uh, better consistency, and my setups are uh, consistent. You know, and the other thing to think about too is, you know, there is a difference between 5.56 and 2.23. Uh, vol volumetrically, they are different as far as what their capacity of powder uh, can and cannot be. Um, but, you know, basically you're safe if you load everything to uh, 2.23 data and you condition your brass to 2.23 data. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do that. I just do it because I like to be as consistent as I possibly can. And I don't have to make um, minute adjustments to say my crimp or um, you know my powder fill or whatever to accommodate the variation between the two. It's just easier for me to, to separate it out. Um, but that is gonna wrap up uh, this series on uh, single stage loading, bulk loading, uh, in 223 and again we're talking about bulk processing we're moving uh, single operations to specific bins and we're working uh, through those in stages um, so as you can see you know to sit down and seat bullets and crimp in a setting you can do several hundred pretty easily but to work through you know every single step of the process um, on a single stage it can get kind of tedious and you'll soon see the benefits of buying a, a progressive with uh, that has all those features uh, built into it. But uh, you know, for those of you on a budget or you just you just like a single stage and that's how you like to load, um, you know, I think this method works out pretty good. And if you guys are interested in the uh, seating die that I use, the Frankfurt Arsenal Universal Seating Die, I'm going to do a separate video on that. Uh, but if you liked it. Uh, if you go over to frankfurtarsenal.com and you use uh, coupon code SQUATCH10, that's S-Q-U-A-T-C-H-10, that'll get you 10% off your purchase, and I think they're running some sales right now, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, that'll help out the channel um, just to kind of keep things moving for us here, but uh, if you guys want to, uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions, it's best to hit me up directly on my email, squatchreloading at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, what's coming up next? We got uh, a lot of things on the pipe uh, coming next. But until uh, next time, guys, God bless.